To say I wasn't a fan of EA's first attempt at Star Wars Battlefront would be an understatement. When I played that beta two years ago, I had such a negative, visceral reaction to it that I made a game-related YouTube video for the first time ever. So, is Star Wars Battlefront good? No. It's actually quite bad. A shallow, watered-down, empty husk of a game that fails to capture the massive and exciting feeling of the originals. While I disliked the game, it was not surprising that it existed. Only a few years prior, Disney had purchased Lucasfilm and signed an exclusive deal for Star Wars games with EA not too long after. My personal theory is that in late 2015, Episode 7 was on the way, and Disney likely required EA to have a game coincide with the release, and the clearly rushed 2015 Battlefront was the end result of that. Once again, a new Star Wars film is on the way, with a Battlefront game coming out a month before. The difference for me was that the gameplay footage from E3 looked encouraging. My biggest gripe with the original was the lifelessness and severe lack of content, and it looked like those issues had been addressed. The class system from the classic games was brought back, heroes weren't random power-ups on the ground anymore, and it included content from all three eras. Basically, the game didn't look like a tech demo anymore. Now that I've actually played the game for myself, I have to give credit where credit is due. This is a vast improvement compared to what I played in 2015, and most importantly, I had fun playing it. The class and battle point systems fundamentally transform the game, and it could be just due to the inclusion of more mechanics which draws my attention away from it, but even the core gunplay felt better to me. While I do have some concerns to address, I came out feeling optimistic about the future of Battlefront. The beta included Galactic Assault, Starfighter Assault, Strike, and the single-player arcade mode. Galactic Assault is the main event and replaces the Walker Assault mode from the first game. The single Galactic Assault map included was Naboo from Episode 1. It's a huge improvement from the Hoth map of the first game's beta. That Hoth map was simply too large and barren for the 40-player limit. Unfortunately, the 40-player limit is still there, but the map is much more reasonably sized and well laid out for teams of 20. It finally feels like there is actually a battle going on, and you don't have to aimlessly wander around looking for someone to kill. That said, I'd still like to see a mode with 60 or even 80 players, something we know they can do. Battlefield Conquest has been 64 players for years now. Structurally, the Naboo map makes far more sense than the Hoth map ever did. It's a linear map that gives the MTT a straight shot to the Defender's spawn area. The Defenders are tasked with picking up Ion Cannons to lower the MTT's shields to do damage, and the attackers are supposed to stop that. This goes on until the MTT reaches the Throne Building, at which point all vehicles are removed and the match becomes entirely indoors. Speaking of the ships, the aerial battles still feel disconnected from what's going on at the infantry level, but the ground vehicles seem to be very impactful. Those of you who are into Star Wars will know that the clone army did not fight on Naboo in Episode 1, and Rey, Han Solo, and Boba Fett did not even exist when this was going on. That's just one of the creative liberties that they decided to take with this game. I don't personally care that they're not perfectly adhering to Star Wars canon, but it does come off as lazy. The original Star Wars Battlefront games went as far as including Jawas and Tusken Raiders as playable characters. I know that the high level of detail in these character models takes time, but if you're going to have a Naboo map with Darth Maul as a villain, you have to throw in Qui-Gon Jinn as a hero at the very least. While I do wish there were more heroes in the full game, I do like the new way that heroes are acquired. As you perform actions that contribute to the game, you're rewarded battle points to spend at the respawn screen. I love the battle point system. It means that the best players will be the first in the match to get the heroes, but it still allows other players to eventually get them later on in the match. You're not only limited to heroes, this is also where you get ships, both ground and air, as well as superior infantry classes. One of the superior classes was a more tank-like unit, and the other was a jetpack unit. Each class also has their own abilities in the form of star cards. For instance, the heavy class's default buff makes the gun shoot faster at the cost of severely reduced movement speed, and the defense ability puts a shield on the front of the gun. The infantry class's default damage ability was to gain extra speed and a shotgun. This was my personal favorite ability, as I was able to get some nice killstreaks with it. The card system also allows you to switch out for different abilities, and you get new ones by opening crates. One of the ones I got was for the infantry class and triggered instant health regeneration upon activation. 
The concern here is that someone could spend $200 on crates and get an in-game advantage. I'm certainly not thrilled about this, but at this point it's not entirely clear to me how large of an issue it will be, since the game itself explicitly stated that the beta crates are not representative of the final release. EA needs to tread lightly here, as this is the game's main progression system and making that pay to win could ruin the entire game. At the same time, this is also the system that is responsible for the game's season passless free DLC model, so I'm going to reserve final judgment until we see how the full game pans out. Strike is just a smaller team game mode, and functionally identical to the equivalent mode in the first game. The map was Maz's castle, and the attackers have to steal an artifact and deliver it to the dropship. If the artifact is left on the ground for a certain period of time, it despawns and the attackers have to start over again. It was a decent mode, but I don't see much of a reason to play it over Galactic Conquest. Arcade mode is hilariously inessential and identical to the single-player mode from the first game, so I'm going to skip over that and go directly to Starfighter Assault. Starfighter Assault is an aerial combat-only mode in space. While I'm not good at them, the space battles are rather competent, but I do miss the ability to go into enemy flagships on foot, which was one of the best parts of the original two Battlefront games. This mode certainly isn't for everyone, and it's probably not something I'd personally play much of in the full game. Finally, there are some gameplay issues to address. The sniper class feels severely underpowered. The sniper itself is hard to use, and I'm pretty sure it took two headshots to kill. Then there's the first person mode, which is once again something that you're better off not using. By using it, you put yourself at an inherent disadvantage and gain nothing. As you would expect, it's harder to see, but I would say that it's actually harder to aim in first person as well, as you don't gain ADS or any sort of extra accuracy for being in first person. It didn't help that the beta had FOV locked at 55 for some reason too. Overall, I had a good time playing this beta, and I might even review the final version of the game. The microtransactions are definitely something to look out for, and if they end up being a huge problem, I'll be the first one to complain about it. Until then, thanks for watching.